Welcome to this episode of the Sports Detective Show on YouTube. My name is James Williams, and today we discuss if the NBA is rigged. Why are we discussing that? Well, last night the Lakers defeated the Toronto Raptors 132 to 131, and Raptors head coach Darko Rajakovic, hopefully I said that right, uh, let his feelings be known after the game about how the officials influence the game. We will watch this little two minute rant that he went on last night, and then we will discuss. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. That's 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 outrageous. What happened tonight? This is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees, shame for the league to allow this. 23 free throws for them, and they get two free throws in, in the fourth quarter. Like, how to play the game. I, all, I understand uh, respect for all stars and all of that, but we have star players on our team as well. How's possible is Scotty Barnes, who is all-star caliber player in this league, he goes every single time to the rim with force and trying to get, get uh, to, to the rim without flopping and, and not trying to get foul calls. He gets two uh, free throws for the whole game. How is that possible? How are you going to explain that, that, that to me? They had to win tonight? If that's, if that's the case, just let us know so we don't show up for the game. Just give them a win. But that, that was not fair tonight. And this is not happening first time for us. Scotty Barnes is going to be all-star. He's going to be the face of this league. And what, what's happening over here it, during whole season, I've been calling it back. It's a complete crap. Coach, do you feel like you're getting any explanations at all? That offensive foul, did you did you see like get any explanation? No, no, there is no explanation. They just they just come up there, they review what and they see what they want to see. They don't want to hear us what we got to say. They don't want to hear the players. They they they, they don't just want to protect us. Over again, the they got 36 free throws, 23 free throws in, in the fourth quarter. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? How are we gonna supposed to play? Is this a, a one-off or do you feel this has been happening to your team a lot? It's happening a lot, but I'm telling our guys, be professional, keep fighting, keep going for the next one. But until when? For how long? All right, guys, that's basically the whole interview. Was it just me, too, or did he his eyes kind of go like, like that for a little bit? Like where he was like, you know, very, very intense, very emotional um, post-game presser from, from Darko there. Now... This and kind of like the headline of like 23 free throws to two free throws had a lot of people all over the place. A lot of NBA fans, Raptors fans especially, but a lot of NBA fans that kind of want to like, you know, rain on the Lakers parade that want to, um, you know, our Lakers haters, maybe LeBron haters were very much saying that the NBA was rigged, that the NBA wanted the Lakers to win this game because they haven't been struggling that much. Well, to my point, I'm like, hey, the NBA is rigged. Um, I think if the NBA is rigged, the Lakers wouldn't have sucked a lot the last few years since they won the title. And I also think that they wouldn't be 19 and 19 right now because the Lakers sucking after the in-season tournament is not a good advertisement for the in-season tournament. And the NBA actually wants to end up selling that in-season tournament uh, to some sort of TV company for like a billion dollars. Um, with that being said, to, to kind of break down the free throw thing, I'm going to show you this tweet here in a second. But just to give you a little bit more of a context for this game. Um, the Raptors were not, I was looking at, I was looking at kind of the preview for this game. I watched this game, by the way, I'm not just reacting to it. Like, uh, also shout out to first take ESPN. That, this is what they led the show off with today. Cause it was Stephen a and uh, Chris Russo and Stephen a had his take. And then, um, Chris Russo went on after Stephen a and gave his take. And he's like, well, I didn't watch the game, but I agree with the Raptors head coach. So for, I just kind of thought that was funny. I just love the people that are like, uh, I didn't watch the game, but here's my opinion on it. Um, with that being said, though, I was kind of reading previews for this game. because I was thinking about betting on it. Um, I ended up doing a live bet on the Lakers. So take with that as you will. But the preview for the game was like, hey, the Lakers might have an advantage here because the Raptors weren't playing Jakob Pertl because he was hurt. So the Raptors basically didn't have a center. So the Lakers had very much a dominant mismatch inside. And we'll show you um, a tweet here from Wozni Lambre, who is a uh, uh, a guy who uh, I don't know if he does any other work, but I know he does a podcast for The Ringer um, or is part of a podcast on The Ringer. I listen to it a lot. I'm um, talking NBA. It's called NBA Group Chat. Um, 
This is what the tweet is here. This is from, he's quote tweeting a Raptor saying, this is BS. We got a deal with NBA official. Do you ignore these supposedly all-time great players? Is he trying to say ignore? Sometimes people online, you guys just can't type. Uh, supposedly all-time great players feel any effing shame. And the picture here, guys, is a, it's a, a graphic from the game that says that shows the Raptors shooting one of two free throws and the Lakers shooting 16 of 20 free throws in the fourth quarter. Again, the Lakers ended with 20 free throws in the fourth quarter. So this is what Waz said about that. Presenting this with no context is silly. Zero fourth quarter minutes logged by at center by a Raptor who is over 6'9 against a very paint-heavy opponent. Come on. And Waz is exactly right on this. Um, the Lakers are last in the NBA in three-point attempts. And um, the reason I bring that up is because if they're last in the NBA in three-point attempts, they have an advantage inside. Anthony Davis scores all of his points at the rim. LeBron scores the majority of his points at the rim. They were playing Christian Wood a lot in the fourth quarter. They were playing a big lineup the entire fourth quarter where they had guys six, eight, like four or more guys six, eight, and above on the floor the entire time. And to that point, too, and a lot of people um, made this point in the comics section, and I'll show you the, the game log after the game uh, for, for the fourth quarter, the last minute of the fourth quarter, too, because this is typically what happens in basketball. After, um, you know, a team is winning in the fourth quarter, a team that is trailing that wants to come back, a lot of times they will intentionally foul. So let's go ahead here. We have the game log here. This is the fourth quarter with 33 seconds left. Anthony Davis, two free throws. 24 seconds left. Anthony Davis, two free throws. 14 seconds left. Anthony Davis, or excuse me, Austin Reeves, two free throws. Eight seconds left. Anthony Davis, two free throws. Three seconds left. Anthony Davis, two free throws. So 10 of those 23 free throws were from intentional fouls in the last 33 seconds of the game. Guys, like that's where half, nearly half of those free throws came. And again, to the point that the Lakers are attacking the rim relentlessly. And again, I watched this whole fourth quarter. Um, I, I watched the whole game, actually. But watching the fourth quarter, the Raptors were shooting a lot of outside shots. Pascal Siakam hit a, f- a few deep threes um, in, the, in the corner. Um, Gary Trent Jr. was shooting. like It seemed like every time he got the ball in the wing, he was firing up threes. They were settling for outside shots. And um, kind, of, kind of to Darko's point here, um, I don't blame him for saying this stuff. He did get fined by the NBA, I think like $50,000. I don't blame him for saying this stuff. Um, this is a thing that you ha- sadly have to do in uh, sports is you have to campaign for calls, and especially so in the NBA. We saw this a few weeks ago when Steve Kerr was um, criticizing officials for you know giving Jokic favorable calls. And... Do guys flop in the NBA? Of course, because they get awarded for it. They get rewarded for it. Um, To the point, though, about the refs, my kind of philosophy I try to impose on myself as a person that watches sports all the time, that clearly has a sports YouTube show, um, is when we talk about refs and we talk about officials, I don't like to criticize them. Because I understand that I don't want to be an official. I don't even want to ref a youth soccer game or basketball game or football game. So my thing is like, hey, I don't want to do it. I understand it's hard. This is the human element we have in sports, especially in basketball, where it's like nearly every call can go 50-50, it feels like. Um, I do think there's things we can criticize the sports culture and specifically the NBA culture about like officiating, like there was two replay calls. Um, It seemed like they were like 10 seconds apart in the game last night. I think it was maybe between like three and four minutes left. There was the, the quickly um, flavoring foul call. And then I think there was a challenge. I can't necessarily remember what the challenge was um, off the top of my head right now, but it's like the, these things just took like, like in the middle of the fourth quarter, we just stopped like two times in like a, a, 10 second game time or what's felt like let's say a minute 60 second game time period and we took like six minutes you know we just sat there for six minutes looking at the same play like over and over and over again and i think that's the stuff we need to fix i think we need a shot clock when we do replays if or if we do less replays um i think those are the things that we can criticize here again 
I don't blame Darko for complaining about officials. Saying Scotty Barnes is going to be the face of the league is a little rough. But again, he, he's just, you know, campaigning for his guys. He's got their back. And, um, you know, apparently the, the players love him. Um, they loved him when he was an assistant coach around the league, specifically Memphis. I saw Chris Vernon tweet that this morning. But, um, yeah, I basically kind of to sum it up, you know, don't complain about officials if you have never tried to be an official. That's just kind of like my thing about it. And, hey, man, if you think officiating is easy, you like calling refs stupid, um, why don't you try and be a ref yourself? I guarantee you wherever you are watching this, listening to this, there is a local youth sports organization, whether it be soccer, basketball, football, baseball, softball, volleyball. I guarantee you they're looking for either volunteer or maybe some of them um, might be paying you know, officials to referee youth sports. So if you think it's easy, you know, why, why don't you, you know, spend some of your free time doing some of that stuff versus complaining about officials online. All right, that's going to do it for this episode here today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you like content like this, I talk NFL, NBA, college basketball, college football. I've been doing this podcast now for over four years. We're just now starting to put clips like this on YouTube. I've done interviews with people all over the country talking about different um, college football, NBA, stuff like that. So if you like that, please hit subscribe. It will really help support the show. And um, thank you very much for watching. I will talk to you next time.